morning, Glory America. Bonjour. Hi, Canada. Greetings to everyone listening in Israel, which is large, and to our new listeners in the PRC after yesterday's all-day forum at the Wilson Center between the Nixon Foundation and the Wilson Center on the U.S.-China policy. I know you're watching and you weren't happy with us yesterday, but that doesn't matter. I've got Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Press, and in a just and perfect world, Sunday's Meet the Press would be devoted entirely to Brexit and to the Boris Johnson miracle wow. in Brussels. Chuck, you're not going to have any time to do that, are you? Even though it's the most important I... story in the world. Wow. Well, okay. It's an important story, and I'll believe it when I see it. Let's see how Parliament handles it first. You know, we've been I feel like we've been we've been on this road before, where a leader in the in the EU make a deal. And then Parliament speaks. So let's see what happens. Right. I, I don't know that it's going to pass. I just think that if you know, they're going out one way or the other, and the disintegration of the European project will be talked about a hundred years hence, whereas Mick Mulvaney's press conference may not be. I'm just sure that leaving the United, the, the European Union, the United Kingdom leaving the European Union, that is such a huge story, and Americans barely know about it, Chuck. Oh, yeah, but I, I think the bigger story yesterday was what happened to America standing in the world in Tur- with, with what happened in Turkey and North Syria. I mean, I think that is – I agree with you on the Mick Mulvaney press conference, but, but the total and complete sort of retreat um, on that was – and sort of handing northern Syria to, to, to Turkey, I think, will be something that will be pretty consequential for decades. Let's talk this through. Yesterday, Mitt Romney said, and I agree with him, it's my reporting as well, that the president was threatened by Erdogan, that he was, Turkey was going to march in anyway, mm-hmm. and the president said, oh. okay, I'm getting out of the way. And, but part of the story that Governor, now Senator Romney, didn't talk about is there's a backstory here of 50 nuclear weapons at, at the air base and an enormous surge of support for Erdogan. Is the whole picture out there yet why Trump might have blinked? I don't think it is yet. I mean, I think we need to see these phone call transcripts. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I think we do. I mean, there's two, two times now Erdogan has a phone call and the president immediately talks about getting out of northern Syria. The first time, uh, Mattis has to resign to stop it. Uh, and this, this next time it happens, I, I think there's no doubt we got to hear what happened on that call uh, and, and see what it is. But clearly, we handed, we gave Erdogan leverage. In some form or another, in the president's mind, he believed Erdogan had leverage, whether it's because of the nukes, whether it's because of something else. But for some reason, Erdogan had leverage over the American president, or at least that's the way Trump handled the, the situation. And you're right, to put it in the terms that Romney put it in, that, that he basically said that the president blinked. Well, that, that is, so, I do so believe the president blinked. I do. I think he pulled the troops out because he got a threat that he believed. That's, by the way, it's my reporting as well. And I have not mm-hmm. talked to Senator Romney, but we have the same whispers in our ears that Erdogan said, I'm coming in anyway. And we had 50 right. troops, 50 troops. That's it. And he was not going to really let them get killed. That, yeah. Well, and I think there's, a, there's, most people think that had the president not blinked, Erdogan wouldn't have done it. I, he didn't do it in, in November. That's right. But, But the difference was, what I don't think has been widely reported, which I've also had told to me by great sources, is that people are in the streets in Turkey supporting Erdogan. And if you go back to last year, there was a mob outside the airbase barracks, and we have not got those nukes out of there. And no one even talks about them. I think the president made news yesterday by confirming that they're there. We've got to get them out of Turkey. Uh, That's a big problem. Well, that was good thing. Good thing uh, Turkey's a NATO ally. That's right. (laughs) All right. So tell me, what are you doing on Sunday? Because you have, I always ask you this and I always joke, you've got 30 yeah. stories. What are you going to do? It's not, I mean, it, it, honestly, it's to me, it's, it's, a, it's the fight to what to lead with, but you got to lead with Syria. And I mean, I think that that's the, that's, you know, we go from there. But I mean, in some ways, these two are starting, the two stories are starting to merge a bit. Um, uh, but, but I think that that's where our focus is. Did the White House offer you yet, which is what I believe they ought to do, Mulvaney? He is a very good guest. He answers your questions. He actually answers your questions. I would love to have him. We're going to find out today, I hope, who we get and who they're going to offer. Don't you think they need to do that given – now, I've been critical of how it was covered. I walked out of this seminar yesterday, and I I said, wait a minute, there was a quid pro quo, and then I read read the whole transcript. I played it. In fact, let me play for you the – The money quote, we can't play it all. This is the money quote, in my view, cut number four. There's an ongoing 
investigation by our Department of Justice into the 2016 election. I can't remember the person's name. Um, the Durham. The Durham. Okay. That's an ongoing investigation. Right? So you're saying the President of the United States, the chief law enforcement person, cannot ask somebody to cooperate with an ongoing public investigation into wrongdoing? That's, that's, that's just bizarre to me that you would think that you can't do that. And so, so you would say that it's fine to ask about the DNC, but not about Biden. So Biden is now, Biden is running for the Democratic nomination, right? That's well, for 2020. He, that, so that, are you, that's are you a, that's a hypothetical because that did not happen here. No, no, but, but I would ask you. No, no. On the call, the president did ask about investigating the Bidens. Are you saying that the money that was held up, that that had nothing to do no, with the, the yeah, Bidens? No, the, the money held up had absolutely nothing to do with Biden. There's no question. And that was the point drawing, I made to you. And you're drawing a distinction. You're saying yeah. that it would there be three, wrong. Three factors. Again, I was, I was involved with the, uh, the process by which the money was held up temporarily. Okay, Three issues for that. The corruption in the country, whether or not other countries were participating in the support of the Ukraine, and whether or not they were uh, cooperating in an ongoing investigation with our Department of Justice. That's completely legitimate. If he had only said that, Chuck Todd, there would not be a story today. But it is what he did say, and I think that's where he gets to get over it, and I think it will work. Your, your response. I, I... You know, I, I just will say, I don't, I, I think the fact of the matter is whatever the White House says, it changes within an hour. I mean, Vice President Pence announced a ceasefire, Jim Jeffrey told reporters right after it wasn't a ceasefire. I, I, I mean, the fact of the matter is everything that comes out of the White House, the story changes within an hour or two. I mean, on many of these things, and it's just, it, that's just the fact. So Who's, I don't know what to believe coming out of the White House. Whose story do you believe when Schumer and Pelosi, uh, Senate, Major- Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, House Speaker Nancy yeah. Pelosi come out of the White House? There are two narratives there, too. Who do you believe? I, I You know, I, I can tell you this. I believe in the I believe you, you can't help but believe in your own experiences. Right, Hugh? You know, what's mo- what's the mo- what's more likely? You know, and at the end of the day, OK, perhaps for the president's right. And it was Nancy Pelosi that went unhinged. Okay. Is that possible? That's possible. Is it more likely that it was President Trump that, that, that sort of had a blustery response? That's probably more possible too, right? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is sit here and use common sense. Yeah, I my common sense tells me that- – my, my common sense last night tells me the president has no filter. And there's no doubt in my mind he said things that were probably very hurtful to Nancy Pelosi. I think they both popped. I mean, all roads with you run to Putin is an assertion. It's a, it's an, a, an attribution of treason to the president. So I'm sure it got mm-hmm. heated. But do you think they talked? And I don't have any reporting. Maybe you do. Do you think they had planned to walk out before they got there? I do. I don't know. I mean, Trump had I, Trump plans walkouts all the time. Right. He right. The last time to them. Right. I, I have no idea. Um, but I would have I would I find it hard to believe. When you're going over there on a war uh, having to do with Syria, if, I think it had to have been an, a smaller issue. They might have planned something. I doubt on something like this. I think that's, uh, I think that's, I just, I doubt. I mean, I know everybody believes the worst in everybody these days, but I doubt. I that. know. Instead of believing the best, and, 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 and no one ever gets well, the benefit I mean, of the doubt. You, this is the, pre- this is the, look, at the end of the day, the country um, is reflective of its leader. And this is how he leads. He leads in a very, you know, it, it, and I think he has helped create this atmosphere that we live in, which is distrust, distrust, distrust. He leads with distrust. Every day he tells you not to trust what's staring you in the face. So Sh- shirts and skins. Is surprising we don't trust? Yeah, it's right? shirts and he, skins. He preaches it. Now, I, I, I wrote a column for The Post this week saying that the, the debate commission put out a schedule of four debates, standard debate. He will never agree with that. I'm not asking whether you think I'm right or wrong. Do you think oh, I'm I correct? I, I, I told everybody. I said, I doubt there'll be debates as far as the way we're used to them. He is just not going to agree to any anything that somebody else suggests. Oh, we agree. Right? He's going to. Yeah, I, I, I will. I will be stunned if we see a one on one debate. I, I, I think he is going to avoid debates. I think it's going to be he's going to try to create forums or whatever. He won't agree to appear on stage with his opponent. That's what I believe. OK, I'm a he little bit different. Ahead. I think he will agree. But provided that the questioners are not the old style objective Sunday show moderator or Jim Lair or you or Jake or anybody like mm-hmm. that, he's going to insist on Rachel and me or 
somebody from the left and somebody from the right. <laughs> That's what he's going to insist on, and the candidate on the other side won't agree to it, right? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I actually expect it to be network by network. I expected that he negotiate that it becomes sort of the wild west, and you don't have the collective. I just don't think the networks are going to work. That the, the debate commission. I think you and I agree that the, there's no way he'll work with the commission. So then it becomes the wild west. Yep. And it becomes just a network by network negotiation. Hundred percent agree, and I like doing that with Chuck Todd. Join him on Sunday. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I'll be right back, America. I'm going to go through the Mulvaney presser with you bit by bit. Stay tuned.